Commissioner Fowler. Present. Commissioner Scribner. Here. Commissioner Sanders. Commissioner Bauer. Here. Commissioner McGibbon. Here. Commissioner Morris. Commissioner McGuire. Here. Commissioner Couch. Commissioner Rivera. Make a motion to approve. Second, Fowler. All in favor, please cast your vote. Motion approved. All eyes. We're now into the public comments um, portion of the meeting. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not, this, not on this agenda and over which the commissioners have, has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. If anyone would uh, like to... Uh, <coughs> address the commission. If not, uh, we'll move on. Uh, notice of public hearings. Announce both 1751 and 1752 together. Um, executive officer will make one presentation and then ask for two votes. First vote 1751 annexation to current sanitation dis authority and dissolution of CSA 11.4. Second vote 1752 amend sphere of influence of current sanitation authority. Mr. Knox. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself on this item. Um, I'm looking at the list of landowners. There are a lot of familiar names on there. I think that one or more of these folks may have uh, contributed to my campaign at one time or another in the last 12 months, and so I'm going to recuse myself on the uh, current sanitation authority annexation item. I'll be back after this item's over. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We, we can't. We can't vote. We won't have a time. Go ahead. You're, you're live. Can I? Uh, oh, you're live. Oh. Yeah. Well, that leaves us without a quorum. Oh. We're and and it's not a uh, rule of necessity. Uh, it it doesn't come under. If you think I can say, then I will, but I'm, I'm taking your advice on that. I don't know. Okay. I, I, I'm hearing for the first time that okay. you think there might be a potential conflict. Yeah. You know, I, I would recommend that you go with that if that's okay. your, your best understanding right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there's hundreds of landowners on this, on this list, it yeah. looks like. Okay, thank you. No, I would recommend that this just be continued. Can it be continued? What's, what's the, yes, it can. What's the results of that? I mean, are they going to not be able to move forward as quickly as they wanted to? Or? Correct, they can't move forward until the uh, commission makes a vote and we go through the, yeah. Yeah. the end of the process. So we'll put this on the agenda for October. Yeah, it's gonna have to do that. We just don't have a quorum without it. We have staff from city of Bakersfield here if, well, this is current sanitation authority. Um, you are the staff. <laughs> you, you, should, okay. you should be okay. leaving uh, while we have this discussion. Okay. I have a motion to table it to the next meeting. No, you can't vote on that. You, oh. the, the chairman will have to just continue the matter for, for the next meeting. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. So on Commissioner Scribner, he may have voted for this as a voting member of current sanitation authority. If he did that, does that <coughs> give him the ability to vote here? No. Okay. I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking for a solution yeah, here. No, no, that wouldn't do it. Okay. I, I hope he didn't do that. Council, um, since there's nobody else here and for this to move forward, could we not, could it not be, and I don't know all the rules for, you know, conflict of interest and stuff. Uh, he's, he's stated that he, this is the problem, but we only have X amount of people. What would be wrong with moving it forward even though he has stated that, hey, some of these people 
possible. Because the FPPC could fine him significantly. Okay. Oh, well, I, I, I didn't, yeah, because I know there's certain um, situations where uh, if somebody claims, you know, they're going to abstain from something, uh, that they can make that vote. If it, but um, I, oh, the only one I can think of is if it's a 1090 violation, which it's not here. Yeah. This is a P political reform act, and then it's a rule in the rule of necessity can take over, and they can vote to make a quorum. Mm -hmm. But under the political reform act. I mean, you may have something in mind that I'm not understanding, but no, I'm, I'm, it doesn't apply here. We don't have that situation here. Okay, thank you. Mr. Knox, do you have anything else to... Uh... Uh, I guess we would need to continue this. Uh, you don't vote to continue it because you can't vote because you don't have a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> but the, chair, the chairman can continue the matter. So, it'd be, yeah, it'd be up to the chairman to continue the matter. So is that what staff uh, recommends? Uh, it is. Okay. I am. Uh, we will continue the matter until the October meeting. Someone may want to call uh, Super Commissioner Scrivener back in. How do I turn this thing off? Okay. Then we're on to uh, number six. Uh, Public project uh, review, um, 1761 City of Bakersfield, um, annexation number 655 and detachment CSA 710. Uh, Mr. Knox. Yeah. May, may I ask a question on this one? Well, that's the, that's the question I had. In the PDF file, the land list of landowners, it didn't show up. And so is there one landowner for this? No, it's, it's actually a or not an LLC, it's a uh, business. Uh, and what's the name? It does not list the, le the business owner's name, it's a partnership. What's the name? What's the, the name of the partnership? Uh, that, I don't have that with me right now. Let me grab the packet from Aaron real fast. Okay, thanks, sorry to, to delay everybody. I just, I need to be sure. No reason to apologize. We could move on. I think we might have a member of the public can tell us the landowner. Hi, my name is Steve Esselman. I'm the principal planner for the city of Bakersfield. It's Echelon Construction LLC. <laughs> do you do you know who the principals are? In the initial inquiry letter, it is a uh, Joseph Kim, President, Echelon Construction and Design Incorporated, a California corporation. Okay, thank you very much. I'm, I'm good to go on this one. Thank you so much. Okay, Mr. Knox, we're good to go. Yes. Uh, this proposal is to annex two properties, approximately 0 0.71 acres of land, generally located on the northeast corner of Papita Way and Cilantro Avenue, north of Shellabarger Road. Mr. Rice is getting a map right there. of the properties. Um, this is vacant land. Um, the properties are undeveloped. The surrounding properties are large lot residential. There'll be no tax increase involved. The uh, zoning in the county is a state residential and will be, remain the same in the city. Uh, there's no ag land conversion. It's consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plans. It's consistent with commission policies. It conforms to the assessor's parcels. The city has uh, signed an indemnification agreement. Uh, function, for functional overlap, the annexation will overlap with CSA 71. Therefore, C CSA 71 will be detached. Uh, because these two lots face a street that was already annexed into the city of Bakersfield, most of the services are already available to these properties. There will be no uh, increase in, in water usage. Uh, there is not a current plan for development for these properties. 
uh, but it will be analyzed uh, when, proper, when improvements are made and CEQA will have to be uh, adhered to. The city has adopted a notice of exemption uh, to meet the CEQA requirements. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. No comments were provided. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. Annexation to the city has a 100% landowner, landowner consent. The city has requested that notice hearing and protest hearing be waived. It is my recommendation that the commission consider the environmental document adopt by, applic by applicant Waive notice, hearing, and protest hearing and approve annexation number 771, Papita number one, and detach from CSA 71, and that's detachment O. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knox. Um, is there any public comment uh, to this item? If not, is there any commissioner's uh, comments or questions? It's, uh, one, it's one vote on this for both the annexation and detachment. I move acceptance of the recommendation by staff. I'll second. Okay, please cast your votes. I have a first and a second. <coughs> Motion approved, all ayes. It passed, so we're moving on to the uh, uh, next item, which is commission items, and there's none. We're on to general business, approval of claims list number 19-07. Just need I a motion, need a, Mr. Chairman? I need a motion. Okay, motion to approve. Second. Okay, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we're on to 8B. Um, Proverst and Pritchard uh, CEQA Review Consultant Agreement, uh, Mr. Knox. Uh, your staff has been working on the formation of the Weldon Regional Water District for several years now. It actually predates me. Uh, the co this commission accepted the signatures for property owners on this several months ago. Uh, so you are a little bit aware of this project. Uh, the formation of this new district will combine five mutual water companies into one district. The area's water supply has uranium and other constituent levels that are above state standards. Individually, these mutual water companies are not large enough or have enough experience to run a remediation facility. The Regional Water Quality Control Board has agreed to use Proposition 1 funding to apply for the creation of a special district. This includes paying for the application, signature gathering, CEQA compliance, et cetera. Early on in the process, we worked out an agreement where the Regional Water Quality Control Board would be the lead agency on CEQA. Now the CEQA document is uh, reaching uh, the end. Uh, Regional Water Quality Control Board has changed their mind and wants this commission to be the lead agency. It is tempting for me to get into an argument with the Regional Board staff or why dumping on this on LAFCO at the last moment is inappropriate, uh, this far down the path towards a full application. I could spend months and eat up significant amount of time and resources and will likely end up right back where we are today. My experience dealing with the Regional Water Quality Control Board is, is considerable. Enough that I have come to the conclusion that, that the fight will be fruitless and lead to more delays and potentially additional costs. But before accepting the role as lead agency, it's appropriate for the CEQA document to be reviewed to ensure there are no significant issues with the document that, have been, that could bring legal risks to this commission. At the recommendation of Joe Hughes, who's our backup attorney and has considerable CEQA experience, uh, and our experience from staff, Provost and Pritchard are have both LAFCO and CEQA experience enough to perform this task adequately. Our fee schedule allows for a $10,000 deposit for CEQA activities. I've requested this additional funding from the regional board. 
This will pay for a peer <coughs> review of the CEQA documents and additional staff time to process the application. So we're gonna make the Regional Water Quality Control Board pay for, for changing their mind. Um, so with that, um, my recommendation is approve hiring Provost and Pritchard to conduct the analysis of CEQA document for regional, Weldon Regional Water District application not to, ex not to exceed $10,000. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Uh, is there any public comment to this issue? If not, do the commissioners have any comment or questions? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Um, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we're on to 8C, Office Renovation Expense Approval. Mr. Knox. Yes. At the last meeting, this commission approved a five-year lease extension for our office space. Included with this lease is a remodel of the office to allow for the most efficient use of our time and resources. We have scheduled the remodel work for the week staff and several commissioners will be at the CalAFCO conference in Sacramento. To get the uh, office remodeled in such a short amount of time will require everything in the office to be removed for the week and returned to the office. I may deal with property management that if office space is unoccupied in our complex, we could store our belongings in there for the week. This would greatly reduce the amount of time required and moving expense. We wouldn't need a truck or a place to store the items. I believe this was going to be a likely scenario, especially since one of the office spaces have been empty the entire three years that I've been there. Um, I've been with LAFCO. Property management has now informed me that we cannot use the empty space uh, attached or three quotes for moving uh, services that are above my normal spending limit. I did put additional funds in our office space, office budget for exactly this purpose, which whether, whether we move to another location or stayed, we'd still need to have this done. I have since had a conversation with our chairman about this. I first asked him if he knew of any place where we could store things, and he said no. Um, but we came to an idea of asking property management if we pay an extra $500 uh, to rent the space, one of the spaces for the week, would they be okay with that? Uh, property management is now talking to um, the owners to see if that's okay. And so I might have a deal, I might not. So I'm still trying to work on lowering the price of this so we can get it done quickly and, and easily and at the lowest, at the lowest price. Uh, but if, if I can't get that deal, I still need um, the commission's approval to spend over my spending limit. Uh, so my recommendation is to approve allocation of funding for packing, moving storage, and moving back into our current space above the off executive officer, officer spending limit. Is there any public comment to this issue? If not, commissioners, do you have any comments or questions? May I have a uh, motion, please? Motion. Second. Second. Okay. Please cast your votes. Motion approved. All ayes. Okay. We're on to 8D. Kern Valley RCD Resolution of Application for Dissolution. dissolution. Uh, Mr. Knox. Yeah. The state of California is encouraging LAFCOs to reduce the number of special districts in the state, especially in active districts. Last year, this commission dissolved 19 districts, including 18 CSAs and Rosa Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District. There are several more uh, districts that are potential candidates for dissolution. Uh, today, I bring you Kern Valley Resource Conservation, Conservation District. This district has been inactive since the 1990s. It does not have a board, no budget, no minutes. It will soon have no assets or liabilities. The last election of the board for this RCD happened in 1994. So they've been inactive 25 years. Uh, met, Mr. Rice and I met with former board members of Kern Valley RCD earlier this year. From that meeting was an attempt to request from the Board of Supervisors to nominate new board members to Kern Valley RCD until a, a election could be held. A reconfigured board would have the power to reactivate 
dissolve or merge with another resource conservation district. After working with county council for several months to find a state code applicable to these circumstances, we were unsuccessful and the request to nominate a new uh, Kern Valley Resource Conservation District board was denied. Without an active board or an avenue to create a board, options are severely limited. Activation of a district or merger with another district requires an active board. The area does, not, does have needs that an active RCD can address. This leaves dissolution of the Kern Valley RCD and annexation to another district as the most likely alternative currently on the table. Tatchby Resource Conservation District has indicated that they would be interested in expanding their boundaries to include this area, but uh, as an RCD, they don't have, get property tax and they don't have funds to pay for this um, uh, or, or a budget to go through the annexation process. Uh, to pay for the proceedings, I reached out to the Department of Conservation. They are the entity that paid for the dissolution of Rose Del Rio Bravo and annexation of the Northwest Kern RCD last year. They have shown interest in funding uh, another dissolution, but have yet to confirm with us. Um, but they, they seem very interested. Uh, knowing that the commission is ready to move forward with this will, will also help in that process. Um, so it's uh, my recommendation that the, dis the uh, commission direct staff to begin the dissolution process at Kern Valley Resource Conservation District as the lead agency and annexation into Tehachapi Resource Conservation District. Continue working to obtain funding from the State, uh, Cal State Department of Conservation or other resources for reimbursement of expenses related to the dissolution annexation. Uh, and lastly, waive local policy requiring individual notification of hearing to affect property owners and registered voters. And just a quick note on that last one, we don't do that, uh, our regular policy is anytime uh, we have a annexation, uh, we, we notify everyone. And if you remember when we did Rosedale Rio Bravo, um, you waived that, that, that requirement so we could just do a, a public notification in the newspaper. Uh, this would be several thousand um, property owners and vote registered voters that we'd have to, to uh, notify. And most of them, I would say nearly all of them don't even know there's an RCD that exists up there. Uh, they would be more confused by our notice than they would <laughs> be informed. Uh, so just want to make sure, make sure you're aware of that. Any pub public comment to this issue? If not, does the commission uh, have comments or questions? Mr. Chairman, I'm always concerned about setting pre precedence, particularly when it comes to notification of property owners. I've forgotten that we had um, kind of dispensed with that concern once before, but I, I think it's just generally speaking bad policy. I know we don't have money for this. We're going to, if we were to do the notifications that would be typical from LAFCO, it would be a costly matter. Can you estimate what the cost of that would be? And do you assume that if we get funding from the state, we wouldn't be reimbursed for those costs? If we got some money from the state, we would be reimbursed for those costs. I do not have a specific number in my head of how much the whole, we'd have to do two notifications, one for the proceeding and another for the protest hearing. Uh, so there would be at least two notifications here going out to those uh, communities twice. The other interesting part of this is part of Kern Valley Resource Conservation District runs into Tulare County. We are the primary LAFCO because the majority of, of uh, it's the tax, yeah. it's a, it, the yeah, majority of the majority of assessed value is actually in Kern County. If the majority of value was in uh, Tulare County, they would be the lead, not, not us. So we're not now going to be doing business in Tulare County with attorney, uh, Tulare County assessors, tax collector, all of those that we normally do with Kern counties, we'll be doing with both. So there'll be additional expense with that as well. And that's part of what uh, I'm going to be going to the state for. I'm, I'm not willing to move forward with this until I have fun some funding in hand. But them knowing that you're ready to proceed will help them make a decision to, to um, 
give us the money. Is it the cart before the horse, though? For? For us to make, you know, approve the beginning of this process before we know we have money in hand. You would not be, I will, I will, I will change my recommendation to be contingent on receiving of funds. Let me respond to her. Okay. Can you turn me on? I can. With regard to precedent, um, in my opinion, you're not setting a precedent other than maybe for a dissolution of a district that hasn't operated for 25 years. Seven grand. No further comments from the commissioners or questions. If not, please cast your votes. We need a motion. Oh, we need a motion. <laughs> I didn't have a motion. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, do I have a motion? Yeah. 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 I make the motion. Okay. And do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, cast your votes, please. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we're on to um, 8E, uh, SDRMA MOU modification and resolution. Mr. Knox. We received the MOU and resolution from the Special District Risk Management Authority, otherwise known as SDRMA, included in the agenda packet. The MOU modifies our agreement with SDRMA to provide health insurance changes in IRS guidelines, Affordable Care Act, and the CSAC EIA pool guidelines all require revisions to the MOU. Both Mr. Schroeder and myself looked, at, looked it over and did not find any red flags, albeit neither of us profess to be experts in health insurance. Uh, it is my recommendation to approve the modification to the MOU with SDRMA and, and approve the resolution. Any public comment to this issue? If not, commissioners, any comment or questions? If not, I need a motion. motion. Second. Second, Fowler. Okay, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all eyes. Okay, we're on to um, 8F, LAFCO Oath of Office. Mr. Knox. It has come to my attention that LAFCO commissioners are required to take an oath of office. Uh, we have not done that in my tenure. I'm not sure if it was done before mine, but we have not done it. The oath is standard for all officials within the state of California. There are several ways to prove LAFCO is in compliance. The easiest to have each of you read the oath and provide LAFCO with a signed and dated copy. It is my recommendation to sign and return a copy of the oath of office to the clerk. Unless you guys want to stand up and read the whole thing and, you know, <laughs> you no. don't have to. So at this time you'll... Uh, All you have to do is sign and give it to the clerk. No okay. There's no action to be taken here. Okay. Um, 8G, uh, Cal LAFCO delegate nomination. Mr. Knox. Yeah. Each year, Colonel LAFCO attends the Cal LAFCO conference, and each year we provide a delegate to vote on behalf of our commission. Uh, in this case, the chair makes the appointment. This year, there is an issue with Cal LAFCO dues structure that I will address in a moment. The delegate will have to be up to speed on the issue to speak on behalf of the commission. In further research, I have discovered that an, an alternate commissioner and even a lowly executive officer can be a delegate. Uh, the chair also has the option to appoint a delegate and an alternate if the chair so chooses. Uh, so it's my recommendation to the chair to make appointments for those who are uh, indicated they are willing, they will attend the conference. Currently that is Chairman McKibben, uh, Commissioner Bauer, and alternates Zaragoza and Gonzalez. I appoint Mr. Bauer if he uh, so wishes to be the delegate at the uh, conference. Actually, Florida Knox. 
Mr. Knox, would you? I, I will defer. <clears throat> I'd like to be the last one to defer to, but uh, you said you could also? I can. I don't want to, but I can. <laughs> I will. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we're on to um, 8H, uh, Cal AFCO dues increase. Mr. Knox. Cal AFCO has been operating under a structural deficit for several years now. To address, address the problem, the Cal AFCO board has recommended both a dues increase and restructure of the dues formula. Colonel AFCO has been placed in the high population category with Los Angeles, Orange, San, uh, San Diego, et cetera. This will increase our dues by over 36%. Los Angeles and several of the large counties will have a 3% increase. The new, the new dues structure will be finalized at the conference. I have voiced my displeasure with the recommendation of the Cal AFCO board, but it will come down to a discussion in a, in a, at the conference and a vote. In your agenda pa packet is a wealth of information about the process uh, being considered. Uh, it's my recommendation that the commission should discuss this issue and provide direction for the delegate to take to the uh, Cal AFCO conference. So apparently you're, you're gonna tell me how you feel about this and I will step forward and, and speak on your behalf. Okay. Do we need to convene as a uh, policy committee or something to come up with it or how do we? Uh, I can ask the commissioners now uh, what their thoughts on it or? Sure. Okay. What would the uh, commission's thoughts be and what would be the recommendation? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I wonder if Bud would mind putting up that page that shows the graph with the county, the population of the county, it was in our packet, the increase percentage-wise and so on. Yeah, I don't have that right now. You don't now. have that with you? Yeah, it, my you file was corrupted, I'm sorry. You, you, oh, you have it in the paper packet? have it in the paper packet. And we can, and Just Aaron can screen. show it on the screen right there. Okay. Because that's very can you bring informative. Up the camera that shows that space? Mr. Chairman, I have one more quick comment. I attended the LAFCO conference last year when our subcommittee, which was made up of representatives from all the counties, discussed the financial status of Cal LAFCO, and we agreed almost to a man and woman uh, that you need to have a dues increase. But this crazy system is, I don't know what clown committee put that together, but it's crazy. And I think this um, this will show the audience that. There we go. You're a little crooked, but there we go. Yeah, Kern would have a. Kern has 930,000 people. Los Angeles has over 10 million people. So we have less than 9% of the population of Los Angeles County, yet we're gonna be saying, paying the same dues amount. If I had a suggestion, it would be to create <clears throat> one more tier in the due structure that's less than those top pairs, those top population counties. Mm -hmm. There's a significant diff difference between us and Los Angeles. Orange and San Diego counties. Um, Why not per capita? Per cat, well, <coughs> that, that's one way to look at it. The other way I suggested was to look at it by budget, by LAFCO budgets, and their comment was that they didn't want to encourage LAFCOs that uh, may be underfunded, of which I took offense to, actually. I take great pride that we get a lot done here with a very small budget. And for them to penalize us because we are efficient at what we do is an insult. And so I'm a little upset about that. Mr. Chairman. Yes. So Mr. Knox, the staff's recommendation is direct delegate to Cal AFCO Commission to negotiate a better rate structure or additional tiers to account for significant population differences 
between the large counties and smaller counties that are currently within the same price bracket. So I'd yeah. be happy to, to um, make a motion to direct staff accordingly, if that's, if that's sufficient. You don't need to make a motion. No. Just okay. have to get approval, acceptance from everyone else. We can move on. I know, I know where you want to go. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the uh, commission is all in uh, step with that, so Absolutely. we're going to move on. Absolutely. Uh, to uh, 8i uh, correspondence, Mr. Knox. A letter in your packet is included from the Auditor Controller regarding a time list of completion documents for elections. Uh, as for your information, I am fully responsible for the delay in providing information to elections on changes in city and special dis <coughs> district boundaries. The issue has already been addressed within our internal process and to the best of my ability won't happen again. Okay. But it was addressed to the commission, so I felt compelled to bring it to you. No more, uh, no more uh, comment on that. We're on to um, 8J, Pol Policy Committee. Mr. Knox. Yes. Oh, Policy Committee. Aha, uh -huh. that's not on my... My notes from here. There we go. Hmm? I got it. Uh, the policy committee met on July 24th to discuss three items, the definition of substantially surrounded, the election procedure for commission chair, and the MOU with Los Angeles LAFCO regarding sphere of influence annexation by primary county. Uh, the definition of su su substantially surrounded, which we could take a full commission meeting to, to have a discussion about, uh, but the policy committee uh, meaning quickly turned away from the actual definition of substantially surrounded and focused on the process. The concept of a predetermination of whether an island is substantially surrounded <coughs> was considered by the committee. Instead of waiting until a full application is ready for, uh, for commission consideration, a city would bring forward an area well before the application is filed. If a positive determination was made by the commission, the city would return at a later date with a full application. Uh, initially, this seemed like a, a, a good idea, uh, but looking at it further, the amount of information that would be required would be very similar to an actual application. So you don't, you'd almost be hearing the full application before uh, you actually bring it to the commission. That puts us in a kind of a gray area that I'm not real comfortable with. Um, so that's gonna be kind of difficult to do. Um, after the policy committee, I presented the concept of predetermination to uh, Mr. Schroeder. Uh, he had concerns on whether predetermination is binding on the commission, which is a very uh, significant piece, whether you could come back later. And it does put, you, put the commission in a difficult position because you say we get to the regular proceeding hearing and a property owner comes up and has a legitimate reason why they don't belong in there. You've now tied your hands of what that, that area is gonna look like. Um, so that, that, that creates another uh, difficult position uh, to, to move this forward. Um, uh, Mr. Schroeder um, has uh, been working on this for a number of years, actually. Uh, he had a hybrid approach to determine substantially surrounded, which include a finding of how surrounded an area needs to be substantially surrounded, like 70%, 75%, or 80% that would be set. Anything less than that would actually come to the commission and you would go through the same process we go through now. So um, that is an option that we could ha handle. Uh, there are several LAFCOs that have a, a minimal amount um, in which it's considered as substantially surrounded. Uh, it is my recommendation that the commission discuss this and direction and return to the policy committee for further analysis if necessary. Any further discussion by the commissioners? Yes. Mr. Chairman. 
only in the state of California is an island not an island where for some reason in order to accelerate the pace of annexations of smaller areas that may be near or uh, having some city a around them to a point would the people involved if if some entity, LAFCO, or the state itself says, well, you're 80% surrounded, therefore you are an island, and you don't get to choose whether you're annexed or not, it's a very un-American concept to me. And I appreciate Mr. Schroeder's efforts on this and yours too, Mr. Knox, because it's a sticky wicket, because we don't want to stand in the way of uh, cities annexing but they have the old-fashioned way of doing it, which is the one that I led the motion on tonight, 100% property owner approval. I, I think cities, Bakersfield, Arvin, Lamont, Shafter, whatever, they can sell themselves. All they need to do is get 50% plus one, and they can annex the area. But every person living within that area who's a registered voter or property owner has a say in the matter. And I think it would be really unfortunate if just because other LAFCOs have led the way by stating a percentage and ignoring those private individual rights to participate in the process that we would follow along. I think the way Kern County has done it through the years is the right way. We're, we do things differently than LA County. We do things differently than San Diego or elsewhere. And I think we should encourage our cities to make their case how great they are and sell themselves to the neighbors that they'd like to annex and do it the way that the law prescribes and ignore this island annexation process. It's just, it rankles me because it's so un-American. Thanks for the listening to the speech. Okay, how would the uh, commission like to uh, proceed on this then? Any further comments on it? One, one last comment. I think there were only two members of the policy committee there for the meeting, and I think we need, at the very least, more discussion. Would you like to refer it back to the policy committee for another try? Commissioner Valley, thank you. I was just going to ask what what uh, how many members were there and how how robust the discussion was, and so I think referring it back with a full um, complement of the policy committee would be a good idea. If that's um, okay with the rest of the group, thank you. I have my direction. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, I've got two more items. Of, okay, go ahead, Mr. Of the, Knox. Pol of the policy committee. One is election of the commission chair. Chairman McKibben made a referral to the policy committee to consider modifying the policy for the election of the commission chair. The commission has elected the chair based on a rotation between the county, city, special districts, and public commissioners. There is not specific language in the current LAFCO procedures, standards, and policies for the election of the chair. The rotation of the chair has been a tradition of the commission, but a not, not an actual policy. The California Government Code section 56334 requires that the chairperson be selected by the commission. There's no reference to how long a term of the chair is uh, or uh, any term limits. The policy committee took into account that there is not a written policy for the election of the chair. The recommendation was to consider the tradition of rotation of the chair, but make it very clear that the commission does not have to the that a commissioner does not have to serve as a chair if they are unwilling to or unable. Uh, while there is a tradition of a rotation, any commissioner can put their name into nomination for the chair. Uh, so it's my recommendation to accept the direction of the policy committee to continue the tradition of rotation of the chair with the, accept, with the explicit option to opt out of serving as chair and make it clear that any commissioner could put their name in for, for nomination. Any further comment by the commission? Okay, if not, Mr. Knox, 
You said you had another item? I do. It's an MOU with, the, with Los Angeles County LAFCO regarding sphere of influence annexations. So we have several districts that cross over county lines that go between um, Kern County, in this case, Los Angeles County. We have other ones that cross over into Tulare County, which we saw earlier tonight, and some, some that go into Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo. So this happens quite often. Um, when a district is expanding, and as we talked about earlier, it, when a district is in multiple counties, the county that has the most assessed value, they're the ones who are lead for that district. Uh, so for instance, uh, um, Antelope Valley, East Kern uh, Water, they're not a district, they're a agency, agency uh, is in both Los Angeles and in Kern County, but Los Angeles, the assessed value is greater in Los Angeles County, so they are the lead. If AVEC, Antelope Valley, East Kern, uh, wants to annex more property in Kern County, they'd actually go through Los Angeles LAFCO to do it. In doing that, they'd also have to increase their sphere. This MOU would allow our LAFCO to, to hear and approve the sphere change in our area while continuing to let um, Los Angeles uh, do the, the annexation portion of it. So we would still get a say. It also works in reverse. Right now I'm working on a annexation of a district that's going to be moving into Los Angeles County for the first time. Uh, although we've agreed to keep this one off, keep this one off the board, uh, not included in this MOU, um, it would allow Los Angeles to say, yeah, we agree this should be moved in, you know, the, the, the sphere of influence should change, but still allow Kern LAFCO to be the lead agency and handle the annexation. So it works both ways. It's, there's not an advantage from one to the other, but it gives both LAFCOs a say when, when it affects their, their area. So I think it's actually a, a very good MOU. Los Angeles has, a, has two MOUs now, one with Orange County and I think the other one with uh, San Bernardino County. And both of them have worked well for them so far. So is my recommendation that uh, you direct me to work out a, a reasonable MOU and bring it back to you when it's complete with, with Los Angeles LAFCO. Any further uh, comments on it? Just one. Uh, just, just one. It, I'm, uh, I'm in favor of moving forward with this. I don't, I don't see any issues, but I would request, Mr. Knox, that you, uh, <coughs> that you give uh, some notice to our county planning director, Laurel Ioviot, mm -hmm. as far as what it is that you are talking to LA County about, just in case they're um, she might have some thoughts on it. I'm sure she will. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, no further discussion on that item. Uh, we're on to um, 8K, wow. Executive Officer Miscellaneous Items, Mr. Knox. Yes, we are currently going through an audit for the 2018-2019 year, since we finished up in June. Uh, Brown Armstrong, uh, had several other auditors in our office last week and everything proceeded as planned. I hope to have the audit completed by the end of the year. But I've been hoping each year of the last three years I've yet to see a final audit brought to the commission before March. So I may be a little uh, encouraged, but I'm, I think we might get there this year. Um, as I've been executive officer, one of the things I've tried to do is uh, technology upgrades to our office and how we do our processes. Uh, it's one of the areas I focused on to bring more accuracy to our process, more backup of critical data, and more efficient use of data and staff time. Uh, it has seemed very odd to me that one of our main functions at LAFCO is the making and the modification of maps, yet we have not had the equipment to properly make and scan a map until now. I would like to thank the city of Taft for selling LAFCO a large format scanner and a large format printer. Um, as surplus equipment, they sold both of them to us for $50 a piece. I, I printed one map. 
um, which is up here on the table that you can see that the kind of things we can, we can do. So take a look after the meeting's over. And Bud is gonna put up a map that we scanned on the screen, hopefully, uh, so you can see what kind of scanning capability we have. Uh, that map was scanned at 400 dots per inch. We can go up to 9,600 dots per inch, which is 24 times more dots than what you have there. Uh, so my estimate is we have almost 1,800 proceedings. Most of those proceedings have two or three maps in it. So we're looking at a good 3,000 or more maps that we need to scan uh, so we have an archive of them. Um, something happened to our office now, they would be all gone. We wouldn't have a backup for those. So this is important to us to get this done. Oh, I should also point out that um, brand new, the scanner and printer were over $13,000. So we made a heck of a deal. And just like any printer, I've already spent more on print cartridges and print drivers than uh, the cost of the printer. <laughs> So that's not, that's not anything new. Um, also to make sure it works, um, I donated a computer that I had at home uh, to, to run those. So you got an extra computer out of it for free. I'm getting to that. Okay. Uh, uh, to take on the task, sure. <laughs> now, uh, are those maps the, uh, going to be in that spare office for storage? Or where will you house those? In other words, I understand that they're just one of a kind, and if we lose them, we're in a world of hurt. Yeah, they, were, they are going to be locked in the cabinets, uh, but they're currently in. But they will be moved with with the rest of our, our, our things. Uh, there is a, a, a rest there, but I, even if we moved to another office, or they'd have to be, they'd have to leave the office to, to do it. So um, there's not much ways around that at this point. Okay. So that kind of leads me to the next point, which is uh, with that many maps, we can't do it with the staff we have. So I have hired Lily Moore to come in as our part-time receptionist. If you remember the Moore name, Lily is Rebecca's daughter-in-law. Uh, so, and she's worked out great. She's a hard worker. She comes in, she gets her work done and has is, is really um, done well in the month that she's been there. I only currently only have her working eight hours per week, but I'm gonna be upping that now that the, now that the audit is over. I know that I'm not gonna to have to give additional time to Gianna to come in to help Aaron. Uh, Aaron has, was very good at handling everything in the audit that they asked for and hasn't needed any help. She's been, she's been great in this process. So now that we know that we don't, not gonna need Gianna back for, for any help when that comes, I can up the hours for Lily to continue to do scanning and do some of mailings of notices and things like that. So she'll be handling quite a bit of our data in the process. Uh, all this extra scanning is gonna require more storage. I've already bought an extra 10 terabytes of external storage that will house both Mr. Rice's databases he uses for his GIS, but also the documents that uh, Lily will be storing. We will eventually need more off-site data storage. We currently have all our files saved in a server that's I think in New Jersey or something. So if anything happened to us locally here, you know, earthquake, we know it's stored someplace safe. Uh, so we have it. Um, and you don't think of New Jersey as safe, but apparently it is when it comes to servers. Uh, we're also gonna be uh, moving to a, uh, more cloud-based software services. Windows 365 allows us to work from the cloud to have better document sharing and calendar sharing. This will help our proficiency in our office. Uh, traditionally, we've just brought, bought the office suite as one 
um, a one-time purchase, as software has, has uh, evolved, you're now paying for software on a monthly basis now. And it's unfortunate that that's the case, but with that, we will always have the most updated version of software. I'm almost done. Um, our website is currently hosted by the County of Kern for free, I, which has been great. The amount of information we can put on the site has been limited. Uh, there is not space to include maps, videos, multiple agenda items, and minutes. Uh, we're supposed to have a year's worth of agendas and minutes on our website, and we don't. Uh, that's not a good thing. Um, uh, we have considered moving uh, from the county site to a hosted site, uh, but the county has informed us they are going to be upgrading their site and capabilities, but we have yet to see what those are, um, whether we'll be able to do videos and and more links to, to our, our information. The, the whole idea is to have more information available to the general public. Right now, if they need any of that information, they have to call our office, it has to go through me, um, which is fine, but there's, there's a lot that they could learn about LAFCO without having to go anywhere else. And especially for special districts and cities, they're constantly asking for maps so we can show them, go to the website. You can do it without, it's, it's just more efficient that way. And for Tom's concern, we won't be putting any of those old maps that don't have uh, signatures from the engineers on the map. Um, that's one of his favorite issues with, with me. Because <laughs> uh, I, I just assume share everything and he's like, no, it's the engineer's property, you can't do that. So. Um, we're working on that. We have secured a dona uh, domain name and we'll soon be changing our emails. Instead of that BAK at RR.com, we're gonna have at kernlafco.org. Uh, so you'll be seeing new, new email addresses from us. Our old ones will still be forwarded to our new ones, so uh, <clears throat> we won't get lost in the shuffle. Uh, quick conference update, early bird registration has passed. We can still register to anyone who's interested in attending. But at a higher price, uh, we will also do our best to secure a room at the Hyatt for the conference, but cannot guarantee one at this point. Um, so if any of the rest of you, I currently have four members going. If anybody else thinks they can, can go or wants to, let me know right away. Uh, also, the legislative session is ended for the year. I have not received an update from CalAFCO on the final outcome, and I expect to have an out analysis of uh, bills with CalAFCO impacts at the next commission meeting. Uh, and with that, our next scheduled meeting is October 23rd, 5 o'clock here at the Board of Supervisors Chambers. <laughs>